It's time for Fresh Oil with singer-songwriter and pastor Keith Manley, a program designed to minister the gospel of God's grace and to bring fresh oil to the brokenhearted. And now, with today's program, Pastor Keith Manley. Hello, my friend. Welcome to Fresh Oil. I'm Keith Manley. Appreciate you joining me again today. We've been talking this week on the subject of attitude. Our verse, our theme verse, has been Psalm 118 and verse 24. And from the King James Version, this is the way I memorize this particular verse. I normally use the NIV. But this is what it said in the King James. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Neighbor, we've been talking about the fact that happiness is a choice. Our attitudes in our life begin by making a choice that this is a day God gave me. Today is a gift. It, it's, it shouldn't be a drudgery. It's a gift. So many people who are on their last day of life would give anything to have the opportunity to have one more day. And you and I have been given that by God. This is the day that God made. He determined that you would survive. And so now what do we need to do? We need to rejoice and be glad in it. We need to make a choice to think about good things and, and, and trust God in our lives. We've been talking about how to develop a positive attitude that will transcend the difficult circumstances of our life. I asked a guy a while back, how are you doing today? And he said, not bad under the circumstances. I said, why on earth are you under the circumstances? God never designed for you and I to be under the circumstances. He designed us to be on top of the circumstances through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, for today's program, I want to talk to you about the truth about circumstances. And before I get to these, let me take a few minutes to talk about circumstances. You need to understand the truth about circumstances or you'll never get to the attitude issue. See, the first truth is this, that negative circumstances are a part of life. I know sometimes it seems like you and I are the only one going through major problems, but friend, they, they, that everybody in life, it rains on the just and on the unjust, and we're all going through negative circumstances. Yeah, maybe it sounds like I'm stating the obvious here, but I'm continually amazed at the number of people who believe that somehow because they're a Christian, they should be exempt from pain and difficulty in, in their life. But listen, friend, the collective sin and rebellion of this human race has cursed our world, and as a result, we live in a world full of negative circumstances. It's just a part of life. They come our way, and it'll be that way until we come to be with the Lord and he takes us home. The way I see it, you've got two choices. We can either sit around and whine about it, or we can learn to deal with it, which is the issue of attitudes. The second thing is not only are negative circumstances a part of all of our lives, but the second truth is this. Good circumstances do not guarantee happiness. Maybe I'm stating the obvious, but it's amazing to me how many people fall into the trap of believing the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Now, I, I, I see people who say, man, if I only had a different job, a bigger house, a, a more beautiful wife, or a more sensitive husband, more money, nicer clothes, all these things, fill in your own blanks, then I'd be happy. But friend, I found this. Whenever the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence, it's usually because it's growing over a septic tank. There's a lot of people who believe that, man, if I only had what he had or what she had, I'd be happy. But friend, that's not always the case. Good circumstances don't guarantee happiness. I've known a lot of wealthy people in my life, and sometimes some of them are some of the most miserable people I've ever known. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being blessed financially. God has blessed me, and, and I, all of my bills are paid. I'm able to pay to be on the radio. I'm able to do what I'm doing today without having to beg or ask for money. Listen, friend, I'm telling you today that no matter what your circumstances are, that's not what determines your happiness. You ought to put as much effort into changing your attitude as you often put into changing your circumstances. Focus on fixing what's inside of us rather than worrying what's around us. 
Here's the application for those of you who are surrounded by negative situations and negative people. And if you're going to stay positive, you better have the right stuff inside you or you'll never be able to do it. The Bible tells an amazing story about two men who had the right stuff. They had the good attitude and they were surrounded by thousands of negative people in a negative, negative world that were challenging them and making it hard, but they maintained a positive attitude. Here's their names, Joshua and Caleb. It was only two years after God had miraculously delivered the Jews from Egypt and out of the bondage of slavery, and now it was time for them to go into the promised land, so Moses appoints a team of 12 spies, two of which were Joshua and Caleb. He sends them into a 40-day exploratory mission, and the Bible says they they, they, uh, that after they came back and returned, the Israelites held a town hall meeting to hear the report of the spies. And they sat in front of the multitudes, and Moses says, so tell us about the wonderful land that God has provided. And the first guy starts out, and he says this, well, it's a magnificent country, a land flowing with milk and honey, the Bible says. But, and as he pauses, another spy jumps in and says, but the people living there are very powerful. They're not going to leave without a fight. And then someone else adds, and it won't be easy because the cities are well fortified and well guarded. And then a fourth one chimes in, and you should see those guards. Some of them look like giants compared to us. And another one says, that's not the worst of it. There are more of them than there are of us. See, friend, as you can possibly imagine this is not the report the people were expecting to hear this is the promised land this is where god spent all this time bringing them to and then someone yells out sounds like the only promise is that we're going to die but then this man caleb stands up and he's like wait a minute then he measured the people as they as they stood before Moses and he said let us go up at once and possess it for we are able to conquer it god give us more calebs in our life i just love caleb's attitude he doesn't deny the report of the other spies he doesn't try to deny the reality of the situation because it doesn't do you any good to deny the circumstances because so many times there are difficult things that we will have to overcome They were entering the promised land, and it was going to be difficult. But in spite of all that, Caleb says, let us go up at once. Let's get on with it. We are well able to do what needs to be done. It's not impossible. I can imagine the the reaction of the other spies. Are you crazy, Caleb? You saw the same thing the rest of us did. We're not able to do it. Wow. Not against people as strong as they are. They would crush us. So the Bible says that the majority report of the spies was negative. The land's full of warriors. The people are powerful. And and some of them saw the Anakim there, the descendants of the ancient race of giants. And they said, we felt like grasshoppers with them. We are so small. And with that, the Bible says all the people began weeping aloud. And they carried on all night long. Let me read from Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30 to 14, verse 4. Here's what it says. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they, they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored. And they said, The land we explored devours those living in it. And all the people we saw, they're of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. And then in Numbers 14, the Bible says, That night, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. Can you imagine? They've been traveling all this time in the wilderness to head to the promised land. And now they get there and the report comes back that we're never going to be able to do it. Verse two, he said, all the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron and the whole community or the whole assembly and said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in the desert. Friend, do you see what a bad attitude can do? 
what a negative report can do in your life. It can bring you to the point where you, 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 you want to die. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Now, here's the question today. Why was Caleb and Joshua so positive while everybody else was so negative? What was going on inside that made them respond to the same circumstances in such a different way? The answer is found in the next part of the story. After a sleepless night of listening to all the whining and complaining, the Bible says in Numbers chapter 14 and verse 6, Joshua, son of Nun and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. See, my friend, when you come to realize that God in you makes a majority, then your, your, your fear of the circumstances will dissipate. See, the ten negative spies were focusing on the problems, and Joshua and Caleb, they were focusing on the blessings of God. There you have it, right back where we started. This is the day that the Lord has made, so I will rejoice and be glad in it. Happiness is a choice. Don't always focus on loss but focus on the blessings of God. Make no mistake about it, my friend. Your ability to be positive is directly related to what do you believe about God. If you basically believe God's against you, then every circumstance, every situation, every difficult person you meet will cause you to react in the same way as the whiners in this story did. The Apostle Paul was writing in in the first century to the church at Rome, and he, he, he gave the, the answer here in Romans 8, verse 35. Look what he said. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long and are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things... We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, Paul's saying here, if you want proof that God loves you, stop looking at the circumstances and start looking at the cross. My friend, I don't know what perception of God that you have in your mind today as you're listening to this, but if it's anything other than that God loves you unconditionally and you matter to him, then Satan has convinced you of a lie about your heavenly father. Negative circumstances are not evidence that God is against you. They're just a part of life. And as I said earlier, until you become certain that God loves you, Your attitude will never be what it is meant to be. The Lord loves us, Joshua and Caleb said to them. And then he gave them, he said to them, we, he will bring us safely into the land and give it to us. We've been talking this week on Fresh Oil about the subject of maintaining a positive attitude, of trusting God instead of trusting our circumstances. No matter what you're going through today, friend, God loves you unconditionally, and he desires to bless your life. He desires to to lift you up and bring you through the storm that you've been facing. Thank you for joining me today on Fresh Oil, Walk in Grace. Thanks for joining us today for Fresh Oil with Pastor Keith Manley. Fresh Oil is an outreach of Grace Family Church in Rockford, Illinois, and can be heard each weekday at this same time. You can reach us online at weneedgod.com. Until next time, remember, God's love for you is unconditional. and He 
He makes His mercies new every morning.